Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse, and in this wonderful tutorial, you see a very nice, powerful Python package called Radon that can be used for when you are trying to refactor your code, and especially in case you want to check for your complexity and the metrics of your code, how quality your code is. So let's see what this package has to offer. So first of all, let's install it, and you see the different features of this particular package. So I've already installed it. Just go with pip. Let's install it again. Pip install Radon, right? So Radon then be able to install it. It comes with two options of right using it in your Python code itself or using it as a CLI. So let's see how to work with it. So first of all, Radon gives you the option of checking for how complex your code is by checking for the supplematic complexity, which has to do with the number of independent code parts or decisions of block code that your code has to offer, right? So let's explain that. So for example, let's say I am from Cambridge here and I want to move to Bar Hill, right? So what are the different parts I'm supposed to take from moving from Cambridge to what are some of the patterns supposed to make? What are the decisions that are supposed to make? That's how the program will operate, right? So let's see how it is soon again. From Cambridge here, I can either use only the orange line without, so I can start from here. Let's see, let's see I'm here. I can move from A603, move up to Victoria Road, move to Huntington Road, then come to 14 here. Then I'll go straight to buy it, right? So that means I'm making two decisions, three decisions. First, I'm going to move to this straight up. From the orange Hutton Road, then straight up to Bio. That is one way I can make. So I'm making two decisions, right? So that is how that is the psychromatic complexity I'm trying to make. So only two. Again, I can also use another option of using Barton Road, right? I'll come down to the blue line here, 12, then I'll move from 13 to move to Saint uh, Saint what is it? Saint yeah, Street Newest Road, then or Saint Newest Road. <laughs> then I come back here, move back to Randall Lane come back to 14 and move straight away. So that means I'm making about five different decisions. So that is the basic idea about psychromatic complexity. So another image to help us understand is that, so let's say something like that. So let's, this is a simple sequence. So let's say S is equal to A, right? So uh, S is equal to two. That is a simple one decision I'm making. I know that S is equal to 12 or S is equal to five. That is a simple decision I'm making. So in case I'm using an if then else, then that if S is equal to four, go to this part. So if S is four, do this. If S is 5, do this, right? So that is, I'm making about two different decisions. So if S is equal to 4, go to this point. If S is equal to 5, go to this point. So the cyclomatic complexity of this particular if decision is going to be 2, right? Because there's one decision here, yes, which is going to be either this or that. So that is what Radon gives you the option of doing. Again, in case I'm doing a viral loop, I'm also going to follow the same option. So Radon gives you the option of checking for this complexity of your code. How? The number of independent parts your code has to offer, right? Your code has to pass through. So that is the basic idea about it. So it gives you the option of checking for the functions, the method, the class, the line, the function start, which we'll talk about it later. It also gives you the option of checking for the maintainability index, which is very, very important when you're trying to restructure or factor your code. How maintainable is your code going to be? So which Radon can be able to check for how easy or how hard to maintain your code, which is only based on the several features, right? How the number of lines of code, the different functions, and how it's structured. With Radon can be able to do that. Also gives you the option of checking for the how speed metrics used to measure the complexity of your code using the size of the program code base. So it gives you the option of identifying the relationship between all your properties, right? So you can with Radon can check for your operands. So when you talk about operands in the metrics here, it means I'm talking about the variables, the values, the names they are going to give. You also have operators that means the built-in Keywords like the if, for loop, while loop, all of those stuff. So you see the option of checking for the length, the vocabulary, the volume, the difficulty, the effort, the packs, which is like that after writing the program, it's this particular radon can to check for the possibility of the bugs that you can find, right? Which is going to be a sum of the volume, see I spell it wrong, <laughs> and the over 3000, which is a constant, as well as the time it will take to restructure or to take for it to code. Very interesting. So now let's see how to work with it. So I have too much of the token, so let's start with it. So I have some code here which we'll try to analyze. So let's see how to work with it. So here I have this code here, right? So this is a simple code with three different functions. I right? will be using Radon to analyze this particular code. So we have a do it, right? Which is going to be a, an if condition. So if s is equal to three, do this particular stuff. We also have another do it two. That means that if s is it's not making any decision, just return s. Then there's another function. So for i in range of s, 
do whatever it's supposed to. So trying to use random to analyze the complexity of this particular code, right? To check for the metrics of this code. So let's see how to, how, how to do that. So let me break it close by. Okay, so now let's see what I mean by now. So we have this example one file. So in case I want to check for the metrics of this particular stuff, right? I can just go with random. Then it gives you the option of doing server stuff. It's a, it comes as a CLI. Right? So if I go with help, you can see all the stuff that can offer us. Okay, so this is how it is. So it's going to give us Radon, then the particular positional argument which can be psychromatic, raw, how, or other optional stuff. So let's check and see what you can do. So I'm going to go Radon. I want to analyze this particular stuff. So you can just go straight away with the psychromatic. So CC for psychromatic complexity, then the particular file. So example, one dot pi. So let's check and see. Perfect. So without the with this particular option, you want to give us this. So the F here stands for function. And then this is the particular line of code. So you realize that here it's on line number nine for the do it three, then line number one for the do it one. So that is the option here. So these are FF means that is a function. And this is the line that it is found. Right. So that's why this is six here. Yeah, right. Perfect. Again, the A here stands for whether it is the level of comp psychromatic complexity it is. Right. So to see more of it, just go with S. So the S is going to show the actual complexity for us. Perfect. So, so this is how it's going to be, right? So this A here is going to tell us about the rating of the complexity of the code. It is from F to A. So A being the least complex, right? And then F being the most complex. So how, what does this one mean? So the ones in the brackets represent the number of independent parts, the number of decisions, the cyclomatic complexity that it must take, right? So for, if you take this code here, if you take the first one, do it two, right? Once you put in X, it's just going to return X. It's only making only one decision, right? Only one independent part. So that's why it's giving us as one here. But for this one, do it one. It's going to give us three. It's going to give us two different decisions. So if I put in X, you want to check and see. If S is less than three, then it's going to execute this, right? So it's going to give us, it's going to check for the S itself. That is the first one. It's going to check and see that if the S is less than three, then it's going to do this. So if the S is not less than three, all these things is not going to be executed, right? That is why it's giving us a psychromatic complexity of two, right? The number of decision paths to make is only two. But if you take the third function, that is the do it three, it's going to give us three different decisions it's going to take. The first one that is going to check and see what the, what the S is. That is the first decision. They're going to loop through it, right? For I in the range of X, then it's going to do this decision. So that is the basic idea about it. So that's why it gave us a three. Right, so that is the basic idea. So with the router, you can check for how complex your code is. You want to check for how complex your code is, the number of independent decision parts your code is going to make, which is going to very, which is very, very useful. So, so sometimes, for example, like this, you can just reduce it, right? You can use it to reduce it and know how to refactor it very well. Now let's check some other stuff you can also do. So we can also check for the maintainability of the code. How maintainable is our code? So let's do that. We need to be random then mi for the maintainability index so the maintainability index is going to be used to check for how maintainable our code is going to be for example one pi then s to see it very well perfect so from here it's telling us that the maintainability right the mi index or the m in the mi that is the maintainability index is 85 so how do we understand that so for if it's telling us 85 that means that is very good right so let's see what I mean by that. So I'll show you this. So to check for the maintainability, right? If it is greater than 75, that means that it is very easy to maintain the code, right? And if it is less than 25, that means that it's very hard to maintain the code, right? And the same thing is with the F and the A. So A means that it's the easiest, F is the hardest. So I'll link below the range so that you need to see it. So this is how it is. So that means that this code is very easy to maintain. 85 that is very very easy to maintain because it's very simple and it's a very simple code now let's try it on something totally different so i'm just going to try it on the previous tutorial that we learned about the trio we had the trio right i'm going to check for that one also so let's go here and check for the maintainability in this of registry and see perfect this one also 75 that, means that is very easy to to maintain so we can also do the same thing that we did and check for the complexity 
cyclomatic complexity of a registry and see all the functions and all the classes and all the things that it contains. Perfect, perfect. Right, so now here is telling us all of these things are functions, the line that it is found, the particular function itself, and then a greedy. Right, so it means that it's very easy. Then one means that from reading from the complexity of it, the number of independent decisions you want to make. So all these things are individual single decisions that you want to make. That's why it's giving us as one, one, one. Very interesting. So this is an actual Python package, right? An actual Python program that you wrote in the previous tutorial. And you have to check for how complex this code is. That means it's very easy to maintain this code. Now let's check for the other stuff you can also do. It's going to be the, the raw, right? This is just for the maintainability index and as well as the CC, right? So you can also do the same thing for pardon. Then raw. If you don't want to give it anything, then just give it as our example. One dot pi. You can bring the S if you want. Perfect. So the one, the row here is going to tell us some interesting stuff. So with the row, it can tell us that the, li the lines of code, right? It is 14 lines of code. Well, that this here is up to 14, almost 14. Then it's going to give us the logical lines of code, which is 10. So if you see that these ones are empty, right? These ones are empty. That's why you know the rest of right? Then the source code, source line, source code, line of code. Yeah, source line of code. Anyway, the, the, the thing will be because you can check the number of comments. So there's only one comment here because of this dash here, right? This hashtag here. Then you have no multiple comments. You have blank lines, which is three, one, two, and then three. And then you also have the comment statistics. Very interesting. So this is something very interesting you can do and also gain with the raw. The raw gives you the option about the overview of the program, the number of logical lines of code, the comments, and then how it's going to be. Perfect. So we have need to check for the row. Now let's go with the same thing, the row that we did, but not for example, but for our registry that we had. Wow, this is too much. <laughs> this is giving us about 187 lines of code. Given at the comment, seven comments, we had a blank multiple. So if you check for that particular code, let me see whether you took that particular code. So if you check for this particular line code, we realize that there are a lot of them, right? There are a lot of them. There are multiple lines of comments. There are single lines of comments. All of these things. That is why it's giving us this particular details. So this particular package gives you the option of doing several other stuff. Now let's move on to the how in this, right? To check for the how speed matrix. So the how speed matrix is just to help us to make better the complexity of code based on the size of the program. So let's see an example. So it's going to be our radon, then HEL, then our example, right? The example one. Dot pi. You're not going to bring the S, right? It doesn't take the argument. Perfect. So now let's see some interesting data that this gives us. So with the how steed matrix. It's going to give us some interesting information. So the information is going to give us the number of operands, right? So the operands are the variables and the values, the operators. So all these things there. So we have two, five, right? So this H is a number of unique operators plus the number of unique operands. So an operand is the values of the variables and then operators are the built-in functions, right? And then you also have the N1 and then N2, which is talking about the number of operators we have in each of them. As well as the unique ones, so we are going to add these ones to get the length to get the length of the entire stuff, the length of the code. They're going to be adding these ones together, right? So six plus three, right? It's going to give us nine. That is the length of it, the number of unique operators, right? As well as the unique operands. Then can calculate the length of the entire stuff, and then some amazing thing you can also do is that you can also check for the difficulty of the code. So the difficulty is trying to tell us how difficult is the code. Right, how difficult is it for you to maintain it? Is it for you to create it as plaster? And it gives you the option of checking for the effort, the number of effort you need to put inside, which has to do with the volume times the difficulty, right? The volume, the product of the volume and the difficulty to give us the effort, as well as the time. So how much time do you need to code this particular stuff? So the time is dependent upon the effort divided by 18. So if we divide 18, like this particular stuff. By 18, so let's try that one. It's going to be Python 30 divided by 18. See that 1.6. So that's why it's almost 1.6, right? So the time is going to tell us how much time we need to, do, to to build this particular code, how much time we need to refactor this code, right? That is the basic idea about it because not plenty. 
the length is just eight it's just nine and then the box is how many bars can be found inside us so how do we find the box so we need to find the volume divided by three thousand so the volume was 25 divided by three thousand is going to give us the particular box it's a number of bars that can be found 0 0.08 that is the basic idea about this particular package. So this package gives you the option of doing several interesting stuff. So first of all, it allows you to check for the. So first of all, it allows you to check for the psychomatic complexity, which has to do with the number of independent code parts. It also gives you the option of checking for the maintainability index, how maintainable our code is, and then also gives you the option of checking for the house metrics, which has to do with the number of bugs found your program, the time to take the effort and difficulty level of it. So thank you for watching this tutorial. So in case you have any question or contribution, and just put it in the comment section below and then check the link below for some interesting books to help you with Python. Thank you and stay blessed.